Hey there, it's me, Maria, back with another video. It's 9.32 a.m. It is February 9th. Happy Friday. You finally made it to Friday. Today is the new moon, by the way. And it's a good time to make new starts and plans for yourself, you know, if you guys choose to. I don't know if you guys ever looked at the old farmer's almanac, but I used to love that, reading that. Even in high school, nerdy person, right? But I love the farmer's almanac. Um, you know, right, we're getting closer to spring, and some people are might be wanting to work on their gardens right now um so you know this is the weekend you know do what you want to do I, I think gardening is one thing that helps uh, relieve stress mind you i am not somebody who has what they call green fingers or whatever that little thing is i don't have like the greatest um skill with plants but i will say that plants love me more now than they did when i was younger because you know how plants have energy and you're like around a plant and for some people for some people when i was young i'd look at them and they'd get a plant and it would flourish like it would just start growing and you know the leaves would sprout and look all great and everything and i remember the energy around me because i was so depressed all the time a lot of times i would get plants and they would die like almost instantly and it didn't matter how much i watered it put it in the sunlight um you know and monitored it, it's 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 uh care it would still somehow get fucked up. And I noticed that when I got away from my family, my adoptive family, I realized that energy around me started to be more positive. And I realized that my plants can grow. And I just realized that there was so much negativity in my life at that time, you know. But anyway, going back to planting and gardening, plants can add a lot to to your life. And not just the, the vibration of the plant itself, but the activity of working with it. So like in like digging around in the dirt, it gets you back into that inner child world, you know, to where you, know, you remember like making mud pies and stuff like that. But now you're beautifying your home, you know what I mean? And you're doing something you love. And hopefully you can find a flower um, that resonates with you. There is a, there's a few books on this issue. I know my dad was really into like the whole, um, and I will be covering it on my Patreon channel if I can get this shit taken care of. But there, there, uh, my dad was really into, um, planting um, for you know things that related to prosperity he was focused mainly focused on his stability in his life um, that seemed to be his main goal in life because he probably knew that there was always some weirdo watching him and bullying him and he was trying to be stable and it was part of his you know rituals okay flowers do have spiritual vibrations so you might want to look up um, the spiritual meaning of flowers. I will be covering a video in it of it in my Patreon channel um, eventually. Okay, <laughs> like I said, because I, I cover herbs, I cover food. Um, everything has a certain vibration. But this weekend, you know, hopefully you make it, you make it good for yourself. So um, last night I was just like, Ugh, you know, really frustrated. Okay, because I know I make some videos. I try to chisel down, like I meditate and say, is there something that I need to bring up? Because with, when you're dealing with any sort of goal in life, okay, my goal right now is to stand back up on my feet. That's as always, because I've always been pushed down like, a, like you know, 14 stairs and steps on a staircase. And then, you know, I'm struggling just to get back up to the first step. You know what I mean? These people do a lot. And some people do it unwilling, I mean, unknowingly, like they do it out of ignorance. And then some people have done it in the past to be malicious, okay? And sometimes, you know, I will tell you the after effects of what I deal with it kind of feels the same way. <laughs> anyway, um, but, you know, I struggle. I struggle a lot. And I deal with people who bully or people who don't understand my point of view. Um, they, I, 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 I mentioned before, I do take my philosophy very seriously, okay? I understand that it is a mechanism, force, that drive that, that leads me, okay? And I've always wanted to do work on my... Um, Basically, when I remember when I was younger, I, I would like to write a lot, okay? And I would say, well, I'm going to write more books and stuff like that and, get, and things like that. Videos became more popular, and now this is what I'm, I'm doing. And I want to talk about what is my life as um, an occultist and delve into, you know, past life. Now, I'm adding that more into now because... Um, you know, I just recently found that out in October or something like that, but really it's about my life. And then also when you really think about it, it's also my life on the run, meaning like, <laughs> um, me coming up as a special clone, somebody who has special gifts, but, um, 
a person who has gifts that chooses to help others develop their gifts and share it with mankind. Um, some people, you know, this all to me is very strange. Um, the reason why is because, you know, um, I would have never gotten into any religious argument or debate. But I also do believe that sometimes, like, um, sometimes things like this that I believe that is a, this whole issue to me seems supernatural. It, it all of it seems supernatural. Okay. Because, like, this is like a very heavy burden to bear on a person. But the only person who could really manage it was me. You know what I mean? It's very strange, but it's, 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 it's cool in a way. But I, I do think it has, like, you know, this whole um, spiritual appeal to it, like a lot of deep meaning to it. And But anyway, um, my goal is to, um, you know, to uh, share parts of my life through this work through um, the creations, um, whether that be on YouTube and Patreon. And it is uniquely me, okay? Um, because, you know, not, maybe the people who persecuted me, you know, they come from families, most of them come from families that are their family, okay? They don't know what it's like to be adopted, raised in an abusive household. They may, they, they, maybe they do, maybe they don't. Maybe they're just the kind of people who are just narcissistic. They don't have the ability to empathize. Whatever the case is, we see things differently. But the law says I have the right to. And so, you know, I get very triggered with people who um, who um, devalue me as a human. This The problem with it is, is because, you know, some people saw me as a clone. And some people think, um, <laughs> the weird part about this is um, they saw me as a clone. And some people really dehumanize me because they're like, oh, she's not really human. Um, as a matter of fact, based on my DNA, some people believe that I'm actually a deity, okay, which is to me, and I, 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 I keep thinking, oh, trip out, that's weird that somebody would think that, but there's people who think that, they believe that I'm a deity, um, like a goddess or a god or something. And so you would think if so the people who, who thought of me as a deity, right, don't, lie, don't ever fucking lie to me because obviously I do have these spiritual gifts that allow me to tap into people. Okay, I have spiritual gifts that, that relate to the physical plane as well as, like, you know, the the, the um, angelic realm or whatever. Oh, oh, I'm getting, like, really deep downloads right now. One that just almost made me feel dizzy. Um, I, I actually am starting to feel <laughs> like Prince Alame, who, not, don't get me wrong, I am not completely unaware of every little thing about Prince Alame, who, but it makes me so happy to understand the reasons why I'm doing certain things and you know it, it's helping me understand me like I always knew that this is I just naturally felt attracted to certain things odd things he thinks that people were like that's why people trip out like what you like that kind of stuff I'm like yeah I, I totally do I totally do <laughs> you know what I mean and it's odd for people like me they see me as a, as a they first notice my color they and then they start thinking okay well this is a black woman how is it, is it that she's this, 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 and this, and this, and this. It's totally possible. It's always been possible. It's been in front of your face many times, okay? But the fact is, is that we deal with propaganda. We deal with uh, people who we have the need to, you know, create racial issues and stuff like that. And there's always going to be, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, propaganda. There's always going to be, you know, the us versus them. I'm not trying to play it. Like I said, you know, um, I am not trying to get, like, an official title for rulership and, and anything like that. But I do have the right to look to my, uh, my own life. If people have started noticing me and started thinking, and I know that there's a lot of people who do kind of mimic me, especially after I get to know them, they kind of try to move and talk like me. It's weird, but whatever. Um, the thing is, is that, you know, um, uh, they, they like to copy me, but they hate giving me credit. And it hurts them because it, it, it's it's racial for them. And it's like, it doesn't have to be that way. You know what I mean? But we, we all know what goes on. And it's unfortunate. But I do feel like, um, you know, I'm accepting more of the Prince Alame who thing. And, but obviously, I didn't come out at exactly like I did the last time. Like, you know, obviously, I'm a woman, okay? Um, and I do get the feeling that Prince Alame, who at one time his wife was gay, um, I guess. And, you know, I, I don't really have an explanation for that either. Because in my mind, 
at this age, like I remember when I was younger, I kept thinking, you know, maybe having a relationship with a woman is not necessarily a bad thing. You, you go through these things, okay? You, I'm trying to like figure out the science of understanding, is there such a thing as some sort of uh, soulmate type thing? Does that really exist? Because I kept thinking, everybody around me, my observation from the people that I grew up with, and I'm reading about all these breakups and all these magazines and stuff. It seems like people fucking hate each other. Okay? It seems that way. You know what I mean? Or they might be enamored with other people for a little bit. And then they kind of snap back into the everyday ordinary stuff. And the very things that people thought were so cool about the person that they're with, they end up fucking hating them for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, I mean, that's, that's when you can tell, like, you know, the relationship is was not meant to be, you know what I mean? So a lot of people make bad decisions about, you know, who they're supposed to be, you know, marrying, settling for, or whatever. And so that's something that really fucking needs to be taken into consideration, especially for somebody like me, okay? Like, I, I am a human, but I do have extreme, what do you call it, qualities, okay? And I, I want to, which puts me in a category of, if you really look back at a long time ago, the word genius, I don't know exactly the entire definition of it, but people believe that people who were geniuses were not human. They didn't look at them. That, I mean, I think that word is like derived from, I want to say Greek, okay? I need to follow up on that. As a matter of fact, I was going to do a video on that, that whole thing about, you know, how people used to view people with higher level intelligence. Because it's like, well, how is that you're not like everybody else? Okay, I get it. I'm an odd bird. Okay. <laughs> but, and so that makes it even more difficult for me to find, like, you know, uh, matches when it comes to friendships and stuff like that. It, it's very difficult. You know what I mean? And I've already grown it. And then you go to work. This is the nightmare part. You go into your workplace, and guess what? They want to change you. And it's like, dude, I was born this way. Just like you're, let's just say, for example, you're, you're dealing with somebody with autism, okay? Somebody would like to say that this is the same category of autism. No, it's not, okay? But let's say you're somebody, they hired somebody um, with autism. And, you know, obviously his parents must have arranged that job for him to have it or whatever, you know? And they start mistreating him. And then, you know, let's just say, for example, it's he has a nervous tick, okay? Not only is he autistic, but he has, like, this little Tourette syndrome thing going. So he starts, like, clicking his head back, like, three times every time he talks, right? And so then they start giving him all this like behavior modification techniques about how, you know, it's important to stand straight and look straight ahead. But it's impossible for him to do that, right? Um, some things can be changed in early childhood development, but he's an adult now. It's like you're bullying somebody for, in this case, it would be his disability. I refuse to believe that what I have is a disability. I am a blessed person. And that's not me being arrogant. It is the truth. Okay. I'm a very blessed person. I'm very grateful for my spiritual gifts. Okay. But it does make me different. And so, um, you know, uh, I, I just feel as though people should be more respectful to what, from what I'm saying. Not because I'm like, I'm saying, well, you need to listen to me. I'm just saying when it comes in terms of me making videos saying, hey, I've been harassed or, or, you know, um, could you please knock this off? You know, and I'm telling you reasons people don't take you seriously. I'm, you know, oh, this is why we have like these like laws and these like rights issues because people need to understand the things that other people do and the right to do it. And then some people assume things and then they react to it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, um, I want to give a good example. Um, okay. Like, um, okay. When I used to wear, um, braids, okay. I would wear braids and I didn't like how, after I took the braids out, my hair is a, is a mess. I've already said that, that I've had issues with that. So I'm like, okay, I break, keeping braids in your hair, like all the time. You can't keep braids in your hair. Unless of course you, you outgrow, grow out your own dreadlocks. Okay. Which I tried that before and it just didn't work out. But anyway, um, you know, you can't keep me hair. So you, I would switch, right? And sometimes I would wear like a half wig and you, I'm, I'm a black woman. I mean, look around a lot of black women do wear wigs. Okay. We do it because it's, it's completely <laughs> convenient. All right. But people will assume, oh, you're doing this because, you know, of course people, if you care about your appearance, and I do, I care about my appearance, okay? Um, it's not because of, of male attraction. I do believe that 
people who project a, a um, uh, and it makes sense, okay? You project on the outside what you feel on the inside. So if you feel glorious, moving, you know, uh, bright and happy, vibrant on the inside, and you're like, somewhere deep inside, even though I have a fucked up life, okay, I'm able to use my creative, my creativity, and my creativity flows through me. Okay, I, I'm going to love that fucking garment with the paisley print because I like things that are funky and loud. Yeah, I do, okay? I want to wear those fucking pants with the um, flared bottoms because they remind me of, like, you know, <laughs> really cool shit that I used to see as a kid. Whatever it is that I choose to wear, um, uh, it, it has everything to do with me, a part of my creativity, a part of my expression. And see, when you're dealing with people who, like, say, oh, you know, you're doing this because, uh, or, or accusing you of liking a man that you have no idea even, you, you did, he's even around. You don't know anything about, like, you know, uh, what do you call it, that you're being gang stalked by, not just this, but you're, you're being gang stalked by other people. And people always assume this, you know what I mean? And this is where the bullying comes in. But, um, what, but what, my, my point is, it's like when I was saying, like, please don't do this, and the fact that people continue to, violate that i feel violated is how i feel and then this is what causes a lot of the anger too because it's like i get scared because you know here we are let's see let's count it shall we okay from 2015 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 and we are now 24. i've been basically saying for eight years straight please don't do this Okay, you're terrifying me. I need to move on with my life, okay? And then this is what happens. You know what I mean? And so you might, you might wake up one day and you might wear uh, a, 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 a pair of pants with a, a shirt. That, that to me is really no big deal. I'm wearing jeans and a sweater, but whatever. People say, think you're getting dressed up. So you're getting dressed up in their mind for so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so. and you have no idea what they're even fucking talking about. See, and you get in this world. See, but the thing is, I have the right to wear my clothes. I have the right to wear wigs. I have the right to, you know, um, do whatever. You know what I mean? And it should not, and it shouldn't, the answer and or the reaction or response from the people that are in my perp group is going to be like, well, you know, but it looks like you're, 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 no, it, it, you are making this dialogue up yourself. You made this shit up. This is, you, you made this shit up yourself. Okay, because Maria was trying to go to work. Maria is used to the professional attire. I remember, like, you know, I was proud of myself when I first moved here, and I got a job at this, like, um, it was a um, an employment agency. Okay, I didn't work there very long, but, you know, it, I, I can't say. There was only like one person who was, like, giving me shit, but for the most part, it was pretty cool. But she required us to wear dresses. We wore dresses. And not only did we have to wear dresses, we wore them with nylons. We, she required nylons. Now I, people really don't wear nylons, but I was proud of myself because I really wasn't getting paid that much. But somehow I always had money to get my goddamn nylons. And I was proud of that. I was like, I'm so fucking proud. Look at me. But anyway. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I, I, I am one of those people. I'm one of those, like, I guess people say, oh, you're so prim, you're so proper. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't go that far, okay? Um, but this is who I am. It, it just, this, these are my choices. These are my preferences. I, you know, I get upset when people um, try to make decisions for me. And I definitely get upset when people don't listen to me. And, you know, however people, you know, look at me, whatever perspective they look at me, if they look at me as just a human being, I'm just like them, and I just have, you know, I just so happen to have special qualities, please respect my rights, I respect yours, okay, if you look at me as a deity, <laughs> then please, by all means, you know, get out of my way, please, you know, I mean, that's like the nicest way I can possibly say it, I, literally am a person who is serious about their life even though people would like to think the opposite i know like i said you know i've had in, in this little competition that i didn't want to be a part of um people wanted me to um you know people look at everything that i didn't have and always wanted to like throw this in my face as if they weren't the ones who were responsible for me being in the situation if I, I told you about the circular nature of this I told you about how you they can come in and wreck your fucking life, right? 
And then because you didn't finish, get, make it to the finish line, whatever that finish line might be, okay? Um, because you can nobody, I, I will tell you, the reason why this, this program is so destructive is because it is meant to kill you. Okay, it is a very destructive program. Isolating you, doing all this stuff, gossiping about you, uh, you know, making it impossible for you to have any sort of cooperation in your workplace, okay? You are already fucking fucked from the get-go. Okay, so I, <laughs> I had to endure all of this. And then, you know, I get blamed for this whole narrative that these people make up behind the scenes all the time. You know what I mean? And I'm serious. It's like, okay, I'm sorry if you don't like this, 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 and this about me. But I'm somebody who got back up, stood back up, and am still going at 53 years old. Okay? Because I believe that, and I know, okay, I know, I, I'm really all I have. Now, I do understand, like, um, uh, about, um, this is issue of like people hanging out with me and not understanding that after I left the nine to five world, which I mentioned yesterday about the nine to five world, and it's really important that people understand this. Okay, this sort of infiltration, this sort of human trafficking is not good. Okay, and it's bad. Okay, like I said, when I signed, like for example, my last employer or any employer, okay, and you sign that, that application, that application with your signature should does not have anything talking about some fucking third party my my connection my agreement is with these two people okay that, and you know and i understand things will operate behind the scenes okay but at the end of the day my contractual agreement is with them okay there's no not supposed to be any third parties now like i said references have always been a part <laughs> references have always been a part of the working life okay and there is nothing wrong if a person gives you a, uh, a a handout like for example you know there might be somebody up there in celebrity world right who is kind enough to give me a job okay ranging through whoever right uh, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that okay because everybody knows that you know when you're looking at like employment offer um, advice type columns or you're reading books on how to improve your career everybody knows that one of the best ways to improve your chances of getting ahead is to be a part of a network. Okay, it's it's really is based on who you know. Okay, and that's all fair and fine, but there's guidelines to that. There's guidelines based on the law to that, and it should not be for any of these particular reasons when it comes to all the discrimination laws would apply to that. Okay, like for example, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna she's Catholic and I'm going to hire her. So she can be Baptist because we're a Baptist. Like, for example, the guy might be Baptist, right? And the girl might be Catholic. But he really loves her. I mean, you know, behind the scenes because he's been stalking her for like, let's just say, for example, six years straight. <laughs> and he's just like hanging out, you know, arranging her job. And every time she brings out her rosary or something, you got these people who are just fucking attacking her. You know what I mean? Or she wears a, a, a rosary on her neck or something. You got people attacking her. That's just like one of the, the examples, okay? And she doesn't know what's going on. She's bewildered. You know, she just knew one day, you know, she felt like she wanted to be, have her closeness to God. So she put on like a necklace, that, a crucifix necklace that her mom gave her, which is, you know, some of those are very obviously Catholic, okay? So she goes to work and then she's talking at a meeting and then all of a sudden the girls are glancing at each other. No whispering. The next thing you know, she's being ignored, you know, in, in the part of the meeting. People are like, you know, just like completely disregarding her, saying side snide remarks, all because of this little arrangement. She had no idea. Okay, she had literally, this is this is one of the examples I'm giving you. Okay, and then um, because the, the whole thing is, it doesn't, it, it's not just a game to these people. It, it suddenly becomes like, <laughs> it suddenly becomes a murderous plot, okay? So, I mean, it can get very serious, okay, when it comes to that sort of stuff. So, basically what I'm saying is, is that I'm disappointed that when I, I, I couldn't explain it well enough. I thought I did. I thought that, like, and I did a video about the laws and the psychological effects and the devastation and where it causes, the history of where it came from. I went through all of that. I thought... But that would be a good enough for people to shut it down. But I was I worked at least two other jobs be, um, after I made that video, and that shit was always in my workplace. Okay, which tells me that somebody was just like hell bent on fucking either killing me 
or whatever. I did not feel comfortable with that. Or, and if somebody just says, oh, I didn't really think she was serious. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Like I said, and, thing, and the, the biggest reason I get why they feel as though I wasn't serious is like I said, because I coordinate my clothes. Because I wear a wig. You know what I mean? Sometimes. <laughs> or, you know, whatever it is. And it's like, okay, we have a right to. And if this was, this is a work issue. This is a work issue. That's like, you know, somebody, let's just say, for example, I go to work, right? And I'm wearing like a nice little curly wig and Maria looks all good, especially in that blue color because Maria loves that blue color. So she's wearing blue against the, you know, anyway, she's looking great. Okay. So she's going into work, right? And she's, she feels as though she's, you know, there, she's professional. She's there for her job. And she has, like to say, for example, a coworker. And so her coworker comes up to her and, and he starts talking to her and, you know, and, and people have to be very open about and, and cooperative when it comes to sexual harassment. Because some people are just quick to say that because they like fucking people over people. This, we are in the fuck over like uh, decade or whatever you want to call it. People just want to fuck people over just because. Right. But, you know, OK, it makes a lot of sense for some people to find their romantic partners in the workplace, okay? Why? Because let's get real, okay? <laughs> we all have busy schedules. After work, we get on social media, but there's nothing like human contact. And the one place where you're gonna, you're pretty much guaranteed to have human contact is in the workplace, okay? Eight hours or more, right? So you, you, this guy comes up to the girl, he sees her in her nice little outfit, and he starts thinking, that maybe she suddenly just got dressed up for him. I, I've had people think this, like, <laughs> and it's funny. You know, I mean, I remember my sister telling me this story about this guy who, who was so presumptuous. He said something like along the lines of to this girl, um, uh, how do I tell her? I just want to be friends, that kind of stuff. It's like, okay, that's not even necessary. Okay. But they start thinking, or making up dialogues, okay? And when, when I've, I've said it before, it's like, you know, she has the right to do that. And if he insists on it, like, for example, he says, you know, hey, um, you want to go to for lunch? And, you know, and I understand, like, there's sexual harassment things, but let's be realistic, okay? Some people are going to follow up on that lunch date. That's not necessarily wrong. I mean, especially if, if he's not in management. Now, if it's in management, it's a little bit different because this girl, right, um, it's supposed to be a subordinate and then this could be a problem. Okay. But she decides to go out to lunch with him. Right. And then you know what? she decides that she doesn't really like him anymore. You know what I mean? Or whatever. They don't have that much in common or whatever. And every day she gets dressed, he's still insisting, you know, that he, that she wants him. You know what I mean? Like in little ways, like he'll, he'll say, call her like honey and stuff like that, slip that in. And because she, she communicates with him and what, after he says these little terms of endearment, right. Um, cause it's awkward. She doesn't know. She should say, could you please not call me that or whatever? Because if he feels like there's some sort of relationship, he's going to feel a sense of entitlement over her. That's just the bumpy way it is. Okay. So these laws are in place for a reason. Okay. And it, I don't think people really kind of, they need to break it down. Like how these little scenarios could actually come about. Okay. But it, it, it's a nightmare. Okay. It really is a nightmare when you're dealing with um, sexual harassment and it's a nightmare when people are making up stories about you and some people say well we wouldn't make up stories about you if you if you weren't taking care of yourself I have the right to and everybody knows I mean you look at a magazine you look at you ask your doctor you ask any kind of doctor whether that be mental doctor or somebody who takes care of your body these are the things you're supposed to strive for I'm old school okay so I obviously have this sort of like prim type lifestyle anyway and, you know, it's kind of fucked that these people wanted to bring me back to life. Even though I, I appreciate my father for, like, wanting to bring me back, it kind of sucks. So, because this is the effect of um, of that. Like, you know, having a person who who has these traits among the majority of people. And that's not me saying a put down or anything, but it's being realistic. You know what I mean? I get irritated by, by what other people think is amusement. Or what other people think is, is lighthearted or fun at my expense. Because I take it seriously. 
Because I not only do I take it seriously, because I, I read into it like, well, you know what, are you really a friend for doing this to me? You know what I mean? But I also, you know, realize that, you know, it's a threat to your life. And in how stupid actions like that, like the, uh, the example that I just gave you about the guy who keeps insisting and calling her honey and babe and stuff like that, and she is, like, dealing with jealous females in the workplace because they feel like she's in love with him, right? And he tells people that it, it becomes just a nightmare. So she, it's horrible. It's horrible, okay? So um, people can be very vindictive and, and evil and wicked and, and nightmarish, and we all know that. But um, I think I'll move on to my next intuitive message. And all I wanted to say was, hey, you know what? I feel like I'm Prince Alame. <laughs> anyway, um, Things are, are going very slow, but, you know, some people feel as though, you know, I'm, um, you know, I, I'm kind of like handling everything well. I will say that I get very frustrated. Um, most people, especially like people like um, the people that I grew up with, they don't understand like um, people that they were a part of my, <laughs> my need to um, break away because obviously this was an, an experiment okay that was very um long <laughs> long experience probably tracking me you know from, from i know back in, in first grade and stuff like that throughout my life so they can study who i am um and it's always been a nightmare it's been a very 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 long time um and i i do want to just kind of focus on the spiritual nature of it but you know I do realize that the people that I used to know were brainwashed like the entire community yeah, and the surrounding communities were also brainwashed like they probably sat there and talked about which clone was which and all this other shit but then they never realized it's like wait a second there's supposed to fucking, fucking be any clones and why are we doing this and how come why is this the way it is I mean nobody really questioned especially they, they never really questioned that it came down to religion how that all tied in you know what I mean it, it's like um I, I get it. I'm a genius. I understand that. You know what I mean? And I'm trying the best I can to deal with being this way. It's hard. This, and that's another part of like, you know, my life's work. It's like, what was it like being a black woman, a person who constantly gets like, you know, all these assumptions, this negative bullshit directed towards her. What is it like living that way? Knowing that you're more, you're smarter than the person who's basically trying to make you feel like you're shit, like you're nothing. What's that like? It's interesting, isn't it? You know what I mean? And it's like, I, I know it's not going to appeal to everybody because there's some people who are so racist, even though they started the issue, even though I won the issue, even though they know good and well that they are completely responsible and they expose themselves for what they are, okay, still, there's going to be some people <laughs> who are going to have an issue with me. Hey, like I said, Marie's blameless. And see, that's the goal in life is to be blameless. To conduct yourself in a way where it's like, hey, <laughs> that's your fucking problem. And it is your fucking problem. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you know, this is my life. And I, and I, I, I even though I, I'm going to tell you, like last night, I was kind of thinking to myself <laughs> how fucking much I cannot stand earthly existence. And yet, I look back now, and I can see how um, <clears throat> it really shouldn't surprise me that I'm some weird reincarnated whatever. Because I remember people used to say, pick up on the words that I, I would say out of my mouth without me, like, really thinking about it. Like, um, I would talk about my house being my dwelling space. And people were like, what? Like, you call things like your dwelling space or your earthly your earthly life and all this other stuff. I mean, I speak in a way that sounds almost like borderline angelic realm and somewhere some that somebody that lived, you know, lived around the 1800s. And I remember having a fascination with the 1800s. You know, like I love the clothes. I love the clothes of the 1800s. And I remember having a lady make a dress for me back in the 90s um, that was very like 1800s style type look. So yeah. I, I get it, you know, um, it all makes sense, and I'm loving how it's all coming together, and I choose to focus, last night I was thinking of how much, how miserable life is here in this piece of shit, like, I kept thinking, I really, um, just like to focus on my spiritual shit, you know what I mean, like, last night, I didn't want to think about the gang stalking, I didn't want to think about, you know, uh, being chased by, you know, these, uh, 
should I call them? I, at first I was calling them the Alphas. I'm like, is that exactly right? No, I, I don't. I know the Alphas were involved, but I don't know if this was like, whatever. Let's just say the the um, informants or whatever. The official informants, okay? I just like focusing on, you know, um, my past lives, my abilities, and what else, what can I ask to access, you know, can I access the, have access to the Akashic records, I mean, I want to know these weird things, you know, I want to get, like, deep into it, and I think now is the time for that, because I, I honestly have just, like, become so disgusted with how, you know, how things are, you know, I mean, certain things, like, it, 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 it kind of surprises me. Like, you know, people get pissed off, like, for example, if I eat an apple at my desk, right? And they think, oh, and then one time I remember somebody making a, a comment because I had I eat nuts, right? And they're like, oh, that's luxurious. If, if, if an apple is luxurious in today's world, we have a fucking problem. Okay, that's another political problem. Like, the fact that people don't have enough to eat around here. You know what I mean? Um, but it does bother me. You know, from somebody who must have lived a long time ago who probably had access to where this was like a common item. How the fuck do people think this is? We, I mean, I just look at the world condition. It's like, man, we are so fucked. <laughs> we are so fucked. So, I mean, like I said, today's Friday. I hope you guys have a good time. And I, I do spend more time focusing on my um, my spiritual life. You know what I mean? I, I just really have a hard time liking my life you know what i mean um and i try to try to only focus on the things that um i do love and i know that there was some sort of like debate and what makes me off is that somebody would actually um think to deprive me of who i am for whatever reason okay i would never give up who i am for whatever reason for whatever reason some people might think well no 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 i would not okay i understand that my brother was trying to like tie me into his issues and whatever i never ever ever said i was going to support anybody in my family okay and when when, when you talk about this kind of financial exploitation this is a main issue when it comes to human trafficking huge okay because a lot of family members do use their family members to make them work like for example i was talking about those little homes those little mother-in-law type homes that there's there's a few of them out here i think it's like in the oleander area maybe i don't remember but anyway they have them and so like for example uh a, a older woman might have a, 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 a adult son right she arranges his employment right she, she she doesn't work anymore okay but she makes sure that he works that job okay and she also makes sure that she tells the people, hey, I don't want anyone talking to my son. So she doesn't want him to get married. The reason why she doesn't want him to get married because she wants him to financially support her. That's why. This is why this sort of intrusion is illegal. So he can't get on with life. Now, mind you, my son is taking care of me right now. And I bless his little heart. I appreciate what he's doing for me. But I'm just saying is some people manipulate and use other people to help them survive. And anytime you hear something like that, that's illegal. So what, she's supposed to give up her life to take care of you? I'm surprised my brother would even think that I, or my sister or any of these people. These people have done nothing for me. They never stood up for me. They never did anything for me. They sat here and let people bully me. They knew it was a part, that was what I was there for. How dare you think I'm going to fucking take care of your ass? Fuck you, no. I mean, really. I mean, if people are like, oh, that's your family. You need, people need to stop thinking that just because that's your fucking family, that you need to sit here and take it up the ass all the time. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Okay? You don't. Okay? It's called abuse. Okay? And that falls under the category of human trafficking. Okay? Anytime a family member is forcing somebody against their will, preventing them from moving on, thinking it's okay for this person to work this job, making them live in a certain apartment. And not only do they just, like in the scenario where she's having this boy live in a little side apartment, she's also making sure she's calling all the apartment complexes in the, in the town saying, don't rent to him. You are a, a, a playing a, um, a game in participating in human trafficking if you guys do any of that sort of stuff. Okay? And it's dangerous. It's not funny. It's not a joke. And so when I was doing these videos, like, a few years ago, 
I would get the download that some people were like, well, that's just you. That's your opinion. It is my opinion, but it's the law. Okay, and the reason why laws were created is because what this action is going to do is it's going to hurt somebody somehow. So to prevent people from having any kind of harm, and you being responsible for causing that harm, okay, there's something there that should prevent that which means that I should be able to get compensation for what happened to me, right? People are ignorant of the law. I understand that, okay? But now you know. Now you know. You know, okay? And I understand that Kern County has a huge problem with um, human trafficking, okay? Because when I start realizing I was a target, I start looking into this. And, like, Kern County, when it comes to California, they're the biggest, biggest, <laughs> uh, what do you call it, contributors to to um, human trafficking and and they, they don't realize it but you need to understand what the scenarios are you may not even realize you're doing it you know what I mean um, but and some people think oh well the, you know the higher people up the people in, in higher positions they maneuver people's jobs and they and they normalize it and they think it's okay it's not okay okay because other people here in this country are believing what they're being told when they look in these books like in employment law and they think the system is fair and they're being exploited okay and and i know it's like wow it's not easy being me it is not easy being me it is not easy being me for some some having all of this and dealing with people when you know what's going to end up happening like you know what you know that this plus this is going to equal some form of a disaster and you're trying to tell people shit right but they don't listen they think it's okay it's not okay because now look at maria 53 years old like 11 years after leaving the farmer's place and look how fucked i am right I'm telling you it's very difficult um <clears throat> what was i going to say about that and i think i'm I move on from that anyway <clears throat> also um <clears throat> I'm empathetic, but I don't forgive. Like, I, I've talked about, you know, separating. I don't want to go into the whole thing, okay? But I did talk about separating, cutting off ties with other people, okay? This would be anybody who felt as though they had some sort of right to financially exploit me and expect me to be their slave. Because that's, what the, what, that's exactly what that falls under. Human trafficking is slavery, Okay, for somebody to think that you're going to financially support them and put you in a situation to where you are deprived of your own needs to take care of somebody else's, that falls under the category of a form of slavery. It doesn't matter if it's your brother. It doesn't matter if it's your own mother. Legal or adoptive, it is illegal to do that. Okay, but here's the thing. When I say I forgive them, I mean I forgive them. A, here's the deal. Forgive means cut off, okay? I don't want to see you in ever again because what you were trying to do to me is just like, I can't even accept it. Get out of my face. I don't want to see you again. Meaning, out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight, out of mind. That's what it means to me, okay? But I also am empathetic. I understand how hard it is to live in this world. We live in a material plane. And the fact that we do live on a material plane, listen, listen to me in all my weird terms, okay? And it just comes out of my mouth because I'm from that realm or whatever. But we do live on a material plane. We live in a place where, unfortunately, if you don't fucking pay your bills, if you don't have a roof over your head, you have, and everything is goddamn expensive, okay? That's why it shocks me that some people are, like, freaked out about something like an apple. They think that that's fine food, okay? Because the world is that flipped upside down right now, Okay? That's how sad it is. But anyway, um, I understand how hard it is. It is a very hard world. You know what I mean? We're trying to find a true friend in, a, in, a, in an environment where people can easily exploit you. And they, they'll do it. They'll take the fucking, yank the carpet right out from underneath your feet. And watch you, like, in the street suffering. You know what I mean? They don't give a shit because they, have, they feel like this is the only way they can survive. Okay, I have always tried to make an honest living as an adult, and I do understand, it, I understand the struggle, but at the, at the same time, you know, I, I will not forgive someone who tries to exploit me. What is respectable in this life is for somebody to stand up on their feet. You know, I don't believe in relying on other people, and if you do rely on other people, it has to be a consensual type thing. 
you know, some people are what they call partners, okay? If, you're, if your partner says, hey, this, we're going to do this, this, and this, and you mutually agree to do that, then you go ahead and do that. I would never, and I, and, and at this point, you know, I don't care what happens to my siblings. I don't give a fuck. Real, adopted, whatever. It's time to split, okay? I don't want your life. I don't want your views in terms of what relationships are built on. I don't want any part of your life at all. Okay, you have no right to even to even want that. Any anything. You have no right to be a part of my adult life at all. You know what I mean? What here it what you're seeing here is just like human trafficking is what you're seeing. And they are guilty of it. And I don't ever fucking want to see them again. And yes, you know, like I said, I swatted many a fly and shouted out your name. Okay. <laughs> I have I have crushed cockroaches when I was outside <laughs> and smiled and thought about you exactly okay i mean it is what it is and you deserve that oh well anyway the next thing is um i have this intuitive message like last night i was thinking about my spiritual ethics you know and i know that these people made like a big deal out of it like because i knew, always knew that religion in the workplace was a no-no i knew it why because i studied employment law you know what I mean? I, I, I did. I would take books home, pamphlets home. If I found somebody threw out some, like, um, what do you call it, work workbooks or something like that that they threw out in, in the trash or whatever, I would collect that shit up because I needed to be in the workplace and I needed to get my shit together. I didn't have everything that everyone else had, so I needed to be on my shit. You know what I mean? So I studied everything I could so I could be there. Okay? But I knew that religion was not supposed to be in the workplace. I knew that. And I felt as though these people who had their bachelor's degrees would know that too. But they did it anyway. You know what I mean? But I think what I'm saying is, is that, you know, I feel as though um, I'm tapped out and when it comes to like the nine to five shit, I, I couldn't even imagine walking into a nine to five place. Okay. I couldn't imagine that. All right. But because of the intense feelings that come over me, um, the heart palpitations, I would say that the last job that I worked, I was dealing with heart palpitations all the time. There was a time where I literally felt like I was going to die. Um, it, it was like sometime around, ooh, I want to say a little bit after February uh, when I was working there. It's like, I, I just can't take this anymore. I can't deal with it anymore. But every day I was expecting to be there. I was going to process those payables. I was going to do all this stuff. I mean, but it's like these people were juggling my life and thinking nothing of it. I, I literally couldn't stand it. And, you know, the thing is, it's like why I hated it is because it does not align with my spiritual ethics. It doesn't align with it. It, it doesn't align with people trying to, I need people to accept me for how I am. And I have every reason to be who I am. Okay, accept me for how I am. I don't want to be, you know, brainwashed into a human trafficking program. I, you guys don't see it that way, but that's what it is. That's exactly what it is, okay? And I wasn't comfortable with it. And, um, you know, uh, when it comes to my ethics and stuff like that, um, I understand, like, my ethics kind of coincide with the law. So when you see people, like, trying to convert you or change your way of thinking, um, <clears throat> and then also not just, like, you know, when it comes to religion, it's, it's more like, you know, um, people, it's okay to have a unique personality. It's just, it just depends on where you are with it. And unfortunately, when you're dealing with human trafficking, they don't match you very well, okay? Like, if I was somebody who um, found people jobs, like, you know, some, like, employment companies, the employment companies used to be so professional, or at least they appear to be, okay? And the reason why is because it seemed like, you know, they put a lot of effort into finding people a good job, okay? Now, I always thought and believe, and I, I totally see, because I've worked jobs that I just, like, were a complete nightmare to me. I personally do think that you should have um, some sort of interest in the industry, okay? Like, the last, when they sent me to this aerospace place, I don't... I really wanted to blow my brains out at that time because I knew these people were perps. I wasn't comfortable with the job interview. They were wearing uniforms, okay? And the thing is, it's like, by wearing a uniform, I felt like you're bullying me and you're trying to win. You know what I mean? You're trying to win this issue. I, I want to forget it. I didn't ask to be brought into it in the first place. I kept, I really wanted to fucking cry because it's like, am I ever going to have 
happiness again? Am I ever going to be able to work again and be happy? Am I ever going to ever have a time? Seriously, at that point, I want it. I want it to kill every single last person in that table. I hated these people. Okay. And I knew that they were trying to like offer me a position or whatever. And I'm like, no, I fucking hate airplanes. Okay. You know what I hate about air, you know, what I like about working at Edwards Air Force Base is because I was learning my skill. I was very glad to pick up from all the little learning that I, I could like blend in and be like, I can learn what I needed to learn. Okay. But did I, on my lunch break, like going outside and seeing all those camouflage vehicles and the, the buggy <laughs> and its buildings and stuff like that? No. No, I didn't. Okay. I hated it. And at the end of the day, when I would see other people who maybe worked in a bank and stuff like that, they seemed happy. It's like, well, I think people really should be able to align their professional um, still with what it is that they love like you know I gave the example of like working in fashion I would have loved to work in, in fashion you know what I mean um, but I think like the goal of this group um, the fact that they're trying to change me you know they everybody thinks that you're you know on the market when you're you know somebody who takes care of themselves and like hey let's get her this person married and you know you'll do all this other stuff and, and, and like I said I don't believe in people getting involved in my marriage or my relationships, you know what I mean? Because here's when you have problems. You got problems because, you know, people are going to take sides and all this other issue. And plus, I'm not interested in living like other people. Okay, I, I like I said, I've studied other people's relationships, and I chose not to go that path. Okay, <clears throat> I, I would keep my relationships very, very private. And um, if I did, okay, but <clears throat> I don't, I'm not comfortable with that. Okay, um, I got to have space. You know, mainly because of the fact that I'm questionably human slash deity, somebody who is a genius, somebody who's 53 years old, I've been on her own most of from life, okay? Um, issues of compatibility, whatever it is. The thing is, I will not, I can't even think about making a friends, going, I don't want to talk to my old friends in the phone until my life starts moving. My career goals are the main focus in my life, period. Period. It is not, you know, me getting married. I would not get married to take to solve my problem. I would not get married to solve my problem. That's not what I want to do. Okay? Not to solve my problem. It's, I believe in standing on my feet. Okay? And unlike, you know, my ex-siblings who want to exploit me on some sort of slavery thing. No, they had no right. I wouldn't fucking care about them. They could die and I'm fine with that. Um, seriously, I am. And I, people think I say these things and I don't mean them because <clears throat> they really think that. And I will tell you, here, here's my nature. I am very loving if I care about you. I will not forget your birthday. I'm always like going to be attentive to you. You know, and I, like I said, there are people I knew when I was younger, I fucking remembered their birthday. They weren't worth a shit, but I remember their fucking birthday. Okay. But if you do something like forever, like said, for example, stand in my way when you make me feel as though you violated me, that's all you need to do and the game all it's all we all changes up from that point. Okay? Because you can put all this love, family responsibility fuck that shit. Okay. And nobody ever told me I had any fucking family responsibility from the get go. All I knew was you're eighteen, you're out the door. Okay? I could press charges on these motherfuckers. Okay? Don't ever fucking come into my life again. Okay, no, there is no love. Okay, really. There is none. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> what else do I want to say? Oh, you know what? Okay, I got bored, right? And I remember talking a few days ago about me looking at some of these tarot readings, right? Now, I am not in any way experienced with the tarot. I remember being a little bit fascinated by it because you know, I like the, the, the drawings on it. And some, there's a, you know, it has an interesting history. The history of the tarot is, um, it tends to be inaccurate and people are admitted that because people tend to forget where it originated. Some people think it originated in Russia. Some people think it originated in France. There's people who think that it rigid, really, uh, originated in the Orient. I will tell you that the tarot is a form of divination that is very old and was taken to different places in different lands and shown to different people and they adapted it just like fairy tales right because you know a lot of fairy tales are based in magic and occultism okay 
it's very deep, okay? And so, and that's one reason. It's another thing I want to talk about. You know, I like, I like enlightening people. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I, I got this deck from, uh, it's a Doreen Virtue uh, deck from an old friend who's passed on. And, um, you know, I, she didn't particularly like this deck. And she didn't like working with it. I can see why she didn't like working with it, and the reason why she didn't like working with it is because the cards are very stiff, okay? I would say that the, the illustrations are very beautiful, but this particular deck, um, they are a little stiff, okay? But I, I love the way they, the, the colors on them, okay? So anyway, I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and pull some cards. And this one says, um, it, it's basically telling me, you know, that, hey, you know what, um, that people do appreciate my ideas, okay? In a world where people like to um, copy, and I know I've been copied in the workplace, okay? I do understand there's probably a lot of copycats of me. You know, um, the thing is, you can't copy a deity. You can't copy somebody who has this unique, <clears throat> this unique story, this unique background, this unique talent, this unique skill. I am like really one of a kind, okay? And I appreciate the, the, the skills that I have. And, you know, um, they say imitation is the highest form of flattery. If this is true, then, you know what, um, I, I guess so, okay? But at the same time, if you really do respect me, please stay out of my shit, okay? Like I said, at this point, I'm, I'm at a point where it's just, you're just violating me. It's just like, I, and I'm recognizing it and I'm calling it out. Um, I'm not answering emails. I'm not going to be answering any emails for like the, probably the next week or two. Okay. I, except for I will follow up with the person over at Patreon thing because I feel as though I need to constantly be on this issue. This is my only avenue. Um, I know that people who are associated with me feel as though you need to explore other options. I don't know of any other options. You know what I mean? Um, this is the best way for me to get my videos across. Okay. Like I said, first of all, I wanted, I was thinking um, YouTube. YouTube was the first thought that came to my mind. Okay, but obviously I knew that YouTube was being like messed with and everything and it's like, okay, whatever. You know, I, I can't stress enough how this demon energy rolls through this this group of people. And this is why I'm suffering, okay? I am suffering from the actions of other people. And like I said, I did give you a, dead, a deadline. I expect this shit to get cleared up. Okay, and it's not me being me mean, it's me being fair, it's me being just, I'm being stern, I'm being serious. Okay, um, <clears throat> I don't want other people like trying to take credit for my work. It's important for me to get acknowledged for what I've contributed. It is not me in any way saying that, oh, I'm I, I don't want anything issues dealing with white supremacy. I this, this racial issue should, like I said, if, I mean, this issue looks so bad in history. I can see why they would, they are very afraid to, to actually put this in a history book. Okay. So I don't care about that, but I do want recognition for the things that I do, the things that I say, the things that I, I do, anything that I can, I, I contribute, any, anything that I do, my work means a lot to me. It, it does. Okay. And just even on the, I'm going to call it like the workplace and nine to five. That was the micro level of where I wanted to be in my life. Okay. And even then, I always wanted to until I got fucking tired of, of dealing with the program. Realizing that there was nothing I could do that was ever going to matter because I'm only here because this, 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 and this. Okay, well, m my shit matters. It fucking matters. It does. Anyway, um, people like and appreciate the fact that I have um, great inner strength. And this card was like, I don't I don't want to go into it, but it's basically showing me the Archangel Michael. And, 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 I'm sorry, the Archangel Archangel Ariel, I am not in any way a big tarot reader. I am not, okay? But I'm trying to have a little bit of fun, trying to shake up my shit, and then also trying to show appreciation for the little gifts that people did give me. Now, tarot is supposed to be read basically on intuition. And it, it kind of is in a way. Um, meaning like when you, the cards that you pull from the deck are based on your intuition. Like it, it, that's, that you, it's the hidden intuition that you're not aware of. That means anybody can use the tarot deck, okay? It's just a matter of understanding how to interpret it, okay? In this particular deck, and I'm not, I'm not filming with anything that I can show you right now, 
because um, I'm building on a, a different program. But um, this one is the Strength Archangel, basically talking about inner strength and then basically release harsh um, judgments, you know, forgive and, and, and move on, show compassion. Um, yeah, I need to move on. You know what I mean? And um, that's like, you know, my main focus right now. And I'm, I'm just trying to find something to care about while I'm on this fucking earth. Like, it's, it, it just, uh, you know, after you, you've discovered um, what people really are, it just, it literally makes you just so sick. <laughs> anyway, so last card I got, I got the Queen of Air. Um, independent, experienced, realistic, and witty. Um, uh, Basically, it's, it's talking about the objective decision making that I have and clearing away everything that no longer serves me. Um, that's true. That's what I'm, I'm doing. And, I, and that's something that I'm brave enough to do. Not everybody is brave enough to do that. You know what I mean? They're, they're afraid, but the sad part is, the reality part is, is if you don't take a stand for yourself and cut away the things that are obstructing your life, you are always going to be in that state. And sometimes growth in our life is cutting away things you know what i mean but it's only for your own good and you wouldn't miss it anyway you think it you, you think it because you get used to being in some people okay like i never liked being in this situation from the very beginning like i i i, I never felt as though a lot of these people um i felt betrayed by like people that i used to know from like all the way going back to like the 90s the 80s the 70s and stuff like that but like the people that I've, I've re recently met, um, I, I don't feel like I can, I can say they betrayed me. I would just say that they were a part of the program. Yes, they were evil. Yes, they were rotten. But at the same time, um, betrayal, because I never had any, like, any sort of expectations of them in the fucking first place. You know what I mean? I, I don't really know them that well. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing right now. I, I am independent. I'm independent because of my situation. Because I was put in a situation where I have to be. And this is what needs to be understood. Okay? It is not in any way me trying to like, oh, I'm just trying to be like, you know, a woman's live person or anything like that. Like I said, the reason why we have laws is so that we can protect the, women, right, the rights of women. Okay? Women have the right to get away from abusive husbands. They have the right to um, look for shelter, okay, without people telling her husband where she's going like I know in, in this situation like you know I was trafficked and targeted um, nobody offered me any confidentiality no one did okay so that means that if I was that woman who was being battered by her husband and I was running to the shelter of a, a, a homeless place okay just for the night or whatever they would probably call my husband you know what I mean this is the kind of stuff that it's it should never be taken lightly okay people's lives are at stake and the fact that, you know, something like this can happen um, and, and, and people not expect, who, who expect me to not have, um, you know, not for, for it not to affect me on an emotional, psychological level, it does. You know, I, I am disturbed by it. I'm disturbed by um, the, the experiment thing. I'm disturbed by the fact that my family thought that I would financially support them. Are you kidding me? I, am I supposed to deny myself of all the things that I, I, I need in life so I can take care of people? What? Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> I don't, I would never fucking do something like that. You know what I mean? Um, I don't care if somebody's like, you're evil for fucking even thinking about it. I don't care if you're sick. I don't give a fuck. Die. Really. That, that's just how it is. Okay? Because I owe you nothing. So anyway, I think I'm pretty much done with my video. I'm hoping, and, and if I get messages, like, there's certain things I feel like I need to say because I need to move on. And the only way I can move on is because I need to make sure that the air is clear and that we are on the same level. Like, we're on the same page. I'm telling you what I need. Please make sure if you are part of this, make sure you get your shit cleared up. I'm tired, okay? I Basically, if you think it's okay to block my way, or cause obstruction, I'm letting you know, no, you cannot. Not legally. You, you can do it, but if you're doing it, you're doing it illegally, and you are hurting me. You're hurting me. For no reason. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, um, I'm the, I, that's my brain. Like, if my brain's the kind of thing, like, person, I'm the kind of person, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, all the time, all the time. Like, I, I, I need stimulation. And by sitting here not knowing, you know, 
how, what's going on behind the scenes all the time. And I believe me, I could. But I don't want to get angry either. I don't want to get angry. I, it's just like, it's not easy being me, okay? It, it just isn't. It just isn't. Take my word for it, okay? I'm going to wrap up this video. I will be back with another video sometime later. I'm pretty damn sure of it. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.